Welcome, welcome everyone. It's time for us to have a bit of a look at Dungeon and Craft, a game that was actually given to me for free, which is uh, kind of nice. I'm a tiny, tiny shallow, so I suppose I get to tiny, tiny games. And that's fine, because I generally enjoy checking out games made by not a lot of people. And I think, uh, I don't know if this is a one-person game, or if it's slightly more than one person. Not entirely sure. But, uh, yes, very small team nonetheless. And this is a game in the survival shooter genre. So basically vampire survivors, Brotato, etc. Very similar to Brotato, as you will see when we get into the game. Now... I'm going to say a few things about this game as we go along, which might not put too good a light on this game, but there are a couple of things that uh, we should take note of uh, with this game. But, even though I will probably say some slight negative things about this game, there are also a fair number of actually quite good things about it. We can start with one thing, we can notice it already here. That is, say, one of the things that might not be as good as it ought to be. So you see the uh, the graphic, uh, the, the choice for the graphics here. So you have the text over here, you have the little guy over here, you have the background. It's all very pixelated, standard pixel graphics. And then you have these buttons that are anti-aliased in very, very small um, pixels. That is a weird design choice, to have different styles of... Uh, Different styles of, um, well, visual presentation, so to call it. And if we go into new game, we have the same thing again. We have, for example, you can pick a few different classes. Um, we can just go through them immediately. We can have the warrior. We can have the ranged man. We can have the tank. We can have the priest, the crafter man, and the speedy. Which is interesting. So um, basically each of these gives um, some sort of bonuses to various stats that we have. And we can see that, okay, so the hearts here for the priest, again, pixelated, no anti-aliasing. Um, for the tank, pixels, smaller pixels, not that much anti-aliasing really at all. But then we go for crafter man down here, and it's all, all of a sudden it's just a little bit weird. <laughs> I don't understand why they've gone for this. And also you can see that um, here, the, the for some reason they made the um, icon with the boots slightly bigger than this. I don't understand really why they've done it like this. Uh, but basically uh, your stats are you have a bit of health, you have some defense, you have melee damage, which is interesting because we can also have range damage. I don't know. I suppose we can, ah, we can scroll down. Never mind. And that is a weird why, why why does that go away when... yeah there are a few things about this we could actually read up on one of these because i'm not 100 percent sure what it does drop rate for example boxes full of items that you can obtain while in the industry increase your chance of dropping experience wait do the boxes full of items increase the chance of drop, dropping experience scrap not 100% sure if that's true. I think it's bo both um, the chance of getting boxes and XP and scrap, which I now know what, what, what the name is for that thing. Craft rate, cost of potion, potion production, uh, and some other stuff, sure. And then we have... Uh, yeah, I think that that was basically it. Also, again, the text for the selection, why is there an outline in red? Why, why is that even there? We have, yeah, we have it over here. There are a bunch of little, like, design choices that I can't really get behind, if you know what I mean. Also, we don't change the appearance, depending on which we choose, which I think is a bit, well, sad. It would be nice. Now, what I have, um, what I have decided uh, after playing this game a bit is to actually have the ranged man because having the bonus ranged damage is nice. Now, granted, I don't necessarily think it matters a whole lot here. You can see we get plus five on the various things here. But as we level up, we can just increase these, and we can also construct new weapons. We can basically be whoever we want to be. This is just your initial things here. So let's start with uh, uh, let's start with the ranged man, and let's go with the character name of Chris and uh, get into the game.
Now here is where the game gets a bit different. You can uh, see that uh, we are not immediately going into where we fight monsters. We are in a little town. And the game is called Dungeon and Craft. We are currently in the craft part of the game. So this first house, for example, we have the crafting room. This is where we can produce new weapons. So we are currently in crossbows because, yes, I forgot to mention that we do pick our weapon as well. And we have a... We have a automatically being the set with the crossbow here uh, we can obviously go for the different uh, other uh, choices here axe sword uh, we have a mace dagger bow wand book which is the priest one uh, i now realize that we actually do start with scrap as this uh, ruby turd is apparently called and uh, that is what we're gonna do and this is one of those things again design choice etc etc if i want to craft this thing i now have to do a mini game where i match the numbers that you saw on the screen there we get some a weird icon that's uh, fading in and out and now we made the item so why why the need for a mini game that's like not a challenge really it's just a thing that's there i don't know but if we leave this place now we can go into our backpack this is our guy we actually also start with a bit of um, skill points i assume that that is and would you know it i want to do a lot of range damage why don't we jam all of that into there so there we go i'm not 100 sure what this number actually represents because it's not actual damage so we'll see about that these are the weapons that we have but in our ranged section here we have another weapon which i obviously just crafted i also like that the range is a pan flute why is ranged, um, the ranged stat a pan flute? Again, no idea. But we have six slots for weapons. These are the ones that we get for free in the beginning, but I'm gonna add the one that I just made. So there we go, that's that done. We also have a potion room. We use mushrooms in order to make potions. There are a fair number of potions. HP potion, HP max potion, speed, Capsule Potion, which I do not know what it does. Defense Potion, Range Potion, Strength Potion, CD Potion, gets your cooldowns down. A Mob Kill Potion, which I also don't know what it does. I have used it, but nothing happens, so I don't exactly know what that does. And a Dodge Potion. So how do you get mushrooms, you might ask? We're gonna get to that in just a second. We also have a pub, uh, a trading room, where we can sell the stuff that we have. I'm not so sure we can buy anything. Just a bunch of people sitting here, lovely. Interesting. So it's sort of a pub and trading area, which is also an interesting thing, I suppose. Uh, but yes, as soon as we start making uh, some stuff and indeed picking up weapons if you find them, we can start selling them over here if we don't want them. In here is the forest. This is where we get our mushrooms. So every time you've been through a dungeon, you can come back here and the mushrooms will have respawned. I don't know why we're using a scythe to harvest mushrooms. It's not exactly what you do, like for real. But in this game, I suppose it is what we're doing. So let's just go with it. Let's just harvest all of these potions. I have learned that early in the game, it's actually good to have a few health potions uh, to just help you out, so to speak. So with that, we're done with a few mushrooms. We go in here, we luckily get the information about which of the mushrooms we need. So we need you, we need you, we pick up the, pick up the ladle, and again, as I have said already, just the visual style of the game is just confusing, because this is very pixelated in big pixels. This is not. This is smaller pixels. It also doesn't look that good. And it goes behind the pot. There are just some some things that just feel... Or that make the, feel, the, the game feel a little bit... Um, just not done, <laughs> in some ways. But I think that this is the full release of the game. Uh, we also have an enchanting room. If we would have some coins, we could start upgrading various weapons. So, for example, we could get our crossbow either the damage up, not entirely sure how much, and the range up. And uh, the cost increases as you keep... Uh, leveling the things so we can do that there's also a weird thing which is press the key to go to the last boss i'm not 100 percent sure why you would want that you just skip to the final i'm not 100 percent sure why but none of that matters we're gonna go into a dungeon here we go the main game play so we are currently obviously locked to tier one we need to 
complete tier 1 to get to tier 2 and so on. There is apparently a grind mode. Experience, two times experience of scrap and death penalty. So if we die, we lose more things and the enemies do more damage. But yes, indeed, we get more experience and scrap. Could be fun, but we're not going to do that right now. So this is how the game works. You might see why I said that this is very similar to Brotato. We have our weapons uh, around us, which is lovely. We run around, we fight these various mobs. There are regular mobs, there are other mobs as well. I just gotta level up, and in this game, level ups do not count towards our boosts. I'm not 100% sure when we get the boost. There is also no way to tell if you actually gotten the boost. So, um, this is one of those things. It would be nice if we could have, like, here, a list of our current um, uh, stats. You hover over one of these, you can get the information about how that would change, but that's fine. Let's pick a bit of range, I suppose that's good. Uh, we are waiting for the people. Those little guys with the exclamation points, they rush towards you, so stay out of their way. So, yeah, oh crap, and there, I just took a bunch of damage. <laughs> Let's take a potion. So, one of the things, and this is very, very relevant now for what I just did, there's a cooldown for potions, we can't use any other. The game is very fast, like ridiculously fast in some ways. So fast that it's a little bit difficult sometimes to actually get out of the way from enemies, because there's not a lot of space from Milo guy to here, and they come in super, super fast. Ooh, I got a health there. That was a bit annoying. Could have gotten that to heal up. That's basically just a heal. A free heal. Uh, no max damage, sadly. So you kind of want to just uh, move, get some ranged guys. Now, also, a, a thing that's going to be mentioned is that the gameplay is... Just a little repetitive. Oh, crap. Um, a bit repetitive, as you will see fairly soon. Because um, it's not that... It, the difficulty in this game oh, relies upon getting out of dodge, basically. I've used another potion. I'm not even halfway through here. Being a bit unlucky with the, the spawns of the enemies. So we'll see how I manage here. We get another one. Range damage up. That seems reasonable. So there we go. Now we get the uh, devils, or whatever the hell they are. And uh, again, another thing to mention is that um, the enemy design is very much sort of hit or miss in this game. Some enemies, I think, are fairly fine, kind of cool looking, but these devils, for example, they look very MS Painty, aren't don't they? Very MS Painty. I don't know. It's just weird, I think. Um, but here we go. We're gonna get to the point where we're basically just gonna start circulating our enemies. We sort of just uh, stay out of their way in the initial part of the uh, of the um, wave. We have a wave 10 out of 16 here. So you sort of gather them up. If we have these attacking ones, we just basically run away until they're done, and then we just start circling. The um, devil guys, by the way, they spawn in those little lovely bats. So what you could do, potentially, is just allow them to do that, and then you can have a lot of XP from, <laughs> from those bats. So you could sort of just grind one specific wave if you wanted to. Uh, there we go, more level ups. We are level 9 now. Don't stand too much still when you have those um, those rushy lads, because they will absolutely rush into you. Uh, having another weapon, by the way, very nice as well. We get a bit of a pause, since we have a boost thing. So range rate, move speed... As we don't have any melee weapons, I'm just gonna go for the range rate up. Potentially that will help us a bit. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, bam! There we go, I was going for the potion and there we go, I died. Damn it, that was not good. Uh, so when you die, uh, if you haven't noticed, you're dead. So teleport back to the universe, you now inhabit, you will lose half your sacred potions and half of the scraps you've collected. No, actually not, because it says 25%. Good luck next time. Cool. So that was actually not good of me. Very, very annoying. It is different when you are talking and playing at the same time. But we have leveled up to level 10, so we now have 45 more SP. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna dump, like, all of it into this. Well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna dump some of it into that. And... They want a bit of dodge, maybe? Or defense? 
you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go defense. I could do some health, I suppose. But I'm gonna go defense. Hopefully that means that I won't be taking as much damage. We are gonna want to do another round of uh, mushroom scything here and create more health potions because, uh, yep, yeah, as you noticed, it is sometimes quite difficult to get away from the enemies. So uh, having some health potions is just uh, very, very nice. And I used all the mushrooms uh, that you use for health potions before. So we're just gonna go around, get all of this. There we go. Lovely. We go back to the potion making place. We dumped the... Oh, I didn't get a lot of those red ones. But at least, at least enough for two of them. And apparently I was able to save... No, I was not able to save the one I had from before. That's sad. The one I didn't manage to actually use. Here we go. We'll, we'll start a new one. So now we're going to be doing a bit more damage, which is nice. We're up to 39 damage. Cool. So hopefully we can get to the boss this time around. So early here, obviously, it's a bit easy to avoid. It's more uh, later down the line. A big health boost. We should definitely do that. Let's get more defense. Let's get our defense up. There's also an ultimate ability over here that we sort of... Um, I think we sort of get to it every wave. So, for example, now we got 15 more. I'm not 100% sure where the 15 came from. Not 100% sure. We got 15 again. Is it always 15? I'm not 100% sure. Oop. Get close there. It's fine. Would not have mind. Could I have gotten another weapon? I'm a little bit unsure about that. Let's do a bit of drop rate. Why don't we? So you can obviously plan out a little bit where you want to go. Because you can see where they do spawn. But uh, as I said, the game is so incredibly fast paced that it's quite difficult. And I haven't really decided what's the best. Is Oh, wow. I just took so much damage. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I haven't uh, decided exactly what is the best idea. Is it to um, be close to the edge, or is it be in the middle and sort of move towards the edge? Not 100% sure. On this occasion, this seems to work quite well. The ranged, uh, the ranged enemies obviously just focus on where you are, so if you just keep moving, it's never going to be a problem. We get another level up, just go for more defense. Let's try to take as little damage as possible. That might work, you know. Okay, we're getting into the Devil Lads. Let's try and kill as many of them as possible before they spawn too many bats. I've <laughs> that situation where there is just so many bats. Uh, there is one trick with these. You can sort of, if you move in a straight line, you can see that the bat, uh, the devil, the devil people are actually slightly faster than the bats. So you can get the devil people to be up ahead, so to speak, which is lovely. So there we go. And they also don't stop, stop chasing, chasing you after a while, which is nice. There we go. Lovely. I think you can press zero to use the potion, potentially. Not 100% sure. I tend to just go with the mouse click. Which worked really well for me last time, yes. Uh, I realized that that is indeed the case that it didn't. So, alright then. There we go. Uh, oh crap, oh crap, yeah, okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, lovely, it would be nice to save, <laughs> save a potion and not just immediately die from uh, so many, so many attacks at, at the same time, would be cool, okay, let's try and get rid of bat boy, or bat boys, as well as the gremlins, so shoot whatever the hell it is, uh, we get another bonus let's go for the big one a bit of extra range where do you spawn you spawn here oh crap oh crap oh crap yeah most enemies do not stop <laughs> it's basically just these guys so i just uh, took a bit of damage there but not much feels like the defense is actually helping a bit i might get some extra um, health uh after we're done with this run so yes indeed this this is very much uh, the gameplay of this game just run around, run around, just take out the enemies one by one. You can't do the thing I mentioned with the devils, you just walk away from them to get to them, but we're doing fine anyway. Okay, I think that this is a good way out. Yes, it was. 
Lovely, there we go. All the rushy guys can just get at me. Thank you, thank you. Go. I think what, if they've uh, if they got in your scent, so to speak, one time they will basically just keep on uh, attacking or charging. That is at least how I think it is. Uh, so there we go. Let's just draw these out from the bats as well as the range. That's very nice. Would you like to just come here? Thank you. Thank you. You might want to come as well. Oh, damn it. Okay, let's go over here. Come on, guy. I know you're fast. There we go. There we go. So now we just have the bats to deal with. So just start circling them. There we go. You're done. Do I get a boost? No, not a... Oh, crap. Oh, crap. That was not fair game. Don't run into the ranged thing. Not gonna take a potion just yet. The potion is 50 health, so I am only lacking 21 health at this, at this point, so... Not the best situation to use it. Let's uh, have some range, so we take care of... Oh, crap, there was one little shorty guy left. Okay. And again, with the uh, design choice, you see the um, projectiles that little, these little green guys throw. They are very pixelated, but uh, these scraps are not. It's it's just a bit all over the place with the... Um, with the, the uh, visual presentation, which is slightly odd. Uh, by the way, down here is uh, our XP level. This is obviously health. We have health here and health here. I'm not 100 sure why we have that, but we do. Let's go for a bit more drop rate with... Uh, oh, crap. Oh, we're fine. We're fine. As long as you can sort of get around your enemies like this, that that's it. They can't do anything to you. Unless you start uh, becoming a bit... Um, uh, uh, like there, where I stopped to let them catch up, and it was a charge boy. Uh, yeah, that's when you can be uh, caught by surprise, if you know what I mean. Other than that, quite easy to avoid everyone. Okay, allow bat dudes to get to me. They kind of look like cats with wings, don't they? And, you know, legs. Like big legs. Sort of. And let's just get around here. Have that one follow me. Oh crap, no, 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 damn it. Damn it. Let's do it again. I don't want you to summon bats, thank you. I mean, it is nice to get a few levels from just a big amount of bats. Like, I, think, I think every single bat drops both experience and scrap, so yes. Haven't seen any chests, I don't think. I don't think I've seen any chests. They are very difficult to spot, though. They're basically the same size as this little thing here. All right, then. Another level up. And we're moving into the final wave, which is the boss. There's the boss. There's the boss. It spawns a bunch of enemies. And you basically just run away from it, because that's the only thing that you have to do. There's also something like fire or something, I think. Yeah, just tiny bits of fire. So at this point in time, we are basically just gonna run away, because there's a lot of these little chargey lads, as you can see, and they are quite annoying. Obviously, yeah, there, there you go. There's a lot of them. Just let them come to you. Let them come to you. The boss is not dead yet. That's okay. We can actually pop a potion. Why don't we? Just to make sure that we are a little bit safe. Yeah, keep on charging me. Keep on charging me. That's all fine. And also the flaming skulls, as far as I'm aware, they don't really do anything. As far as I'm aware, at least. Okay, we're getting some shots in on the boss. Which is uh, perfect. I'm not entirely sure what, what its little, little orbs. Are they supposed to be, like, bad or something? But it's also one of those things. As long as you are moving... Left or, did I just kill the boss? I think I killed the boss. Um, with the boss, as long as you're moving left and right, it uh, the boss is actually faster than you. And uh, the boss might catch up to you, unless you start moving diagonally a little bit, because all of a sudden it's slower than you. So there's a tip. Yeah, as I said, there are just uh, a number of design choices about this game that could use a bit of an upgrade, if you know what I mean. I realize that it's not easy to make a game and make it perfect, etc, etc, but some of the, these things kind of need to work on a little bit, I, I think. 
No idea if the developer is going to see this, but if you do, yes, there are some things that you could work on. So now we're basically just uh, picking off the um, flaming skulls as they circle around us. Rather, me, I'm circling around them. There we go. Tier 1 is successful. Everything is uh, gotten by me. And what I can do is go for Tier 2, but we're going to exit for now because we are going to want to use our very, very, very many uh, piles of scrap to craft a few things. So I have three spaces left. I'm going to keep going with crossbows, I think. So with a price of, let's say, 2800 we can't do... We can basically do two tier four. If I do, is this how I do? If I do that, so now I'm gonna create that. So C L Q H B. Perfect. I made two of those, I think. Um, oh, you're very expensive now, all of a sudden. Well, that's lovely. Um, yes, that's uh, that's fine. Oh, right, it's because I had changed that to that, yes. So we can now also do a tier 2, why don't we? X, D, K, J, K, lovely. Yeah, that little weird gif there is kind of weird. So there we go, we go into range, we now have our tier 4. We can get that into there, the other one here, and then our tier Two. So we'll do that for now. You can obviously replace the ones that you have and get something else. And you could obviously, as I said, have any weapon really, both melee and ranged. But there we go. We've done that. We are going to go, obviously, into the forest again. To the forest again. Chop down mushrooms. Scythe them all up. I mean, I, I could sort of see it uh, be a thing if you had like a sickle. I think sickles could be useful for getting mushrooms. But a Big bloody scythe that you usually use for like wheat. Not that much. So I'm not 100% sure what uh, what is the general idea with that. But it's fine. Uh, it works, I suppose. There you go. We can go in here. We are going to keep doing health potions because those are generally the best ones. I suppose there could be some use for the other ones. You know what? Do we have something I can make a lot of? I'm seeing I have... Quite a lot of those. Is there any potion that uses both of those? Sadly not. Uh, 190, 159? No. Well, that's a bit annoying because what we can do... Okay, you know what? We can do that one, I suppose. Get that one. Get that one. Oh, no. I wanted to create the potion. Because I think I can make... Uh, if I make 10... Yeah, if I make 10 potions of whatever sort, I don't know if uh, they are worth differently. We'll, we'll see when we get to the trading area. Can I actually... Yeah, I can make 10 of these, actually. That's good. So let's make 10 of this potion. There we go. So if we now go over to trading area, we have potions. We have 10 of these. And now, for some reason, we get a minigame. Why we need a minigame to sell things and a really big animation for a handshake. I don't know. It's so weird. Well, actually, you know what? We can, yeah, we can sell more. There we go. Oh, not 87. That's way too much. There we go. I think we can sell that. There we go. Did I sell all of them? Yes, I did. So now we have 100 gold. Lovely. Means that we can go over to the enchanting place. And obviously we do want to enchant our crossbows because that's what we're using. And we're going to go for damage, obviously. No, no minigame here. Why isn't there a minigame for enchanting when there is a minigame for crafting and a minigame for selling items? But enchanting, no, 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 we just do that automatically. All right, then, uh, as a final thing, we're going to go for tier two. I'm not gonna go with the grind mode, that feels dangerous. I don't think we need to check these, do we? Oh, right, never mind, yes, we do. I totally forgot about that. We need uh, we need to apply some of our SP. Let's get uh, a fair amount of extra health. Let's whack like 15 of the points into that. Then I'm just gonna go for another 25 points into range damage. We'll do another 15 into defense and i'm actually gonna get some drop rate there we go some more range damage a bit more health 
actually a fair bit more health, 200% uh, more health, in fact. There we go, tier 2, with 6 weapons. So now we're gonna get uh, new enemies. Well, not really. It's actually... Well, they look different, that's true, but they actually are exactly the same kind of enemies. We have these guys, they shoot the fireball, and we have the slightly bigger guys in the tier 1. Um, in the tier, tier, tier in the tier 1 challenge, so to speak. And here we basically have Shargy lads. There we go. Them's, them's those ones. So, uh, yeah, it's basically exactly the same. It's just slightly different uh, visual style on them. And... Uh, I gotta say, these guys, whatever the hell they're supposed to be, they're supposed to be like, um, uh, what's the word, the lion-looking ones with, like, um, uh, snake, uh, snake parts. Not a percent sure what they are called. It's not a hydra, I don't think. We have these, though. Okay, I suppose that these are new. Like, a, a different kind of ranged uh, enemy that shoots some sort of Beam? Is, is that a beam? I'm not 100% sure. So, uh, yeah, with six weapons now dealing more damage, we actually can plow through this quite effectively. So these do not uh, actually charge us uh, all the way. They look kind of cool. I mean, that's a kind of nifty... kind of nifty... Uh, model? There we go. <laughs> Failed to get that. Uh, a model, yes. Kind of nifty model. Very nice. Uh, we now have access to our ultimate. We are not going to use our ultimate. We're going to save it, the ultimate for the boss, obviously. So now we have uh, the bat boys of this uh, level. These little guys with uh, the scythes and the lovely horns. They uh, gather, or rather, uh, summon skeletons, I suppose it is. The weirdest looking skeletons I've ever seen, but still, skeletons. Uh, so that's uh, how they work. They work exactly the same as the uh, winged cats, or whatever they were in the tier 1. So you kind of want to get rid of them uh, if you can. Make sure that they don't spawn too many of the skeletons. But they also stop, so they don't uh, actively charge all the way to you, which is lovely. So let's just uh, keep going. Oh, there we go. There's a box. That's... What is that? Is that a club or something? Which is... This is also weird. The club is trying to get to us, or whatever the actual weapon is, but uh, as we're running away from it, it can't get to us. <laughs> so we're gonna have to kill all the enemies, and then we can get to the weapon. We can't even use the weapon right now, that is for later. So there we go, now we did get it. Wait for everything to come to us. Range damage, plus seven, that's very lovely. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, no, 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 we're, oh, took a bit of damage, but I think that the defense uh, bonus that I've gotten is actually working quite nice for us. Uh, these uh, people will have to come close to me so I can kill them. Thank you, thank you, die, die, die. Keep just uh, looping around them. And one thing, by the way, also, if we compare this to Brotato, one thing that this, uh, I don't know if this game does it worse or better. No, I'm gonna say it does it worse, actually. <laughs> so in Bro Tate, what happens is that, um, first of all, each wave is on time. This is not on time. This is just uh, when you've killed all the enemies, that's it. Wave over. I don't know if that's good, because as I've uh, said before, what you could do is just uh, have... On this level, endless amounts of skeletons you can just harvest forever, if you wanted to do that. So that's, like, not that good. Um, also, the, the thing that this game does, compared to Brotato, is that this game uh, basically summons all the enemies immediately. Instead of just uh, portioning them out throughout the fight. Well, I just got another weapon, but that's lovely. Um, yeah, which is kind of also what makes this such a mess a lot of the times. So you don't really have time to kill enemies before everyone just dog piles on you. It would be better if they spaced it out a bit. So we get melee damage, you don't need that. Uh, dodge, defense, yeah, let's get more defense, I suppose. Okay, on this occasion, be the oh crap, this is, this is very bad. Potion, oh, I'm not doing well with the potions. Bloody hell, that was... Okay, well, that, this is the final... Uh, this is, after all, the final... Um, uh, wave before the boss. We are gonna get to the boss. I'm gonna pop potions immediately, of course. Maybe not two of them, but definitely one. 
go. Pop another potion. Yep, yeah, now we're in the green again. Lovely. So there we go. This wave is done. We're gonna activate the power. Where's the boss? There's the boss. I'm just gonna do the ultimate, which is just basically shattering everyone, including the boss. And there we go. Tier 2 is done. <laughs> oh, we just ran into fire. That was very bad. So now we can go, go to tier 3 if we want to, but we're gonna exit. And for some reason, clearing a tier 2 doesn't yield you much scrap at all. I'm not 100% sure why that is, but it is the way it is. So the fact of the matter is, apart from uh, harvesting mushrooms, we can't really do much. Uh, well, I suppose we can. I suppose we can get uh, just uh, just one more of these. So Y, C, Q, H, and W. Oh, well, crap, I was a little bit too slow. <laughs> it's difficult to do this in some in, in some cases. Well, there we go. That's much better. So we got that one. So what we can do now, range. What did I get? Oh, I got a wand tier four. Ooh. Well, that's a bit interesting, actually. We'll start with the crossbow, trade out the tier 1 crossbow, and you are tier 4. So you'll replace that one, and we did indeed get two of these. That's also tier uh, 1. So what we can do now is we go into the pub and ranged, and we have three, I think, of these. Yes, so we'll sell all of these. And we need to do the minigame again. Which is very simple. And now we got 300 gold. To which we can actually do some good with, I think. Or with which. We can first of all upgrade our crossbow damage even further. Like so. But now we have a wand. So we can actually do that too. Lovely. So there we go. That's all done. Should we do another tier? I suppose we should, but then uh, we are going to need uh, to make just a few more health potions so that we don't immediately die, which I hope that we don't. Uh, we, did I level up? I might have leveled up as well. We shall look at that in just a few moments. But first of all, shoppy, 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 down the mushrooms. I want to make the potions. Shoppy, shoppy, shoppy. There we go. Play. Get all of you. And there we go. Over to Potion Station. We can make four of these, actually. That's very good. Yeah, I'm swimming in the uh, pinkish mushroom, but not so much in the red one. Well, six potions, that's gonna have to do. I think we have, yes, we have 45 SP. I'm just gonna whack all of it into ranged damage, I think. Well, actually, 25 into range damage. Why don't we go for not craft rate? Why don't we go for drop rate? Let's see if we can't uh, get more XP and scrap, etc. etc. That might be very useful. So let's go for tier 3, see how well we do here. So now it's basically the same again. So now we have new enemies that do exactly the same. We have some ranged, we have some just that are running towards us, and. Uh, I think we are getting more stuff. That's lovely. Uh, defense up. Thank you. I'll take it. So we're just going to keep on. There we go. There's the rushy lads. They're a bit aggressive. Not going to lie. A bit aggressive. Definitely feels like I'm picking up more stuff uh, as a matter of fact. I think they are... Yeah, they're now... Well, okay. Not all of them, but... Sometimes they're actually dropping four of the little things instead of just one each. So sorry, well, two each, I suppose. There's also a chest. Attack, attack. There we go. Is that another another wand? I can have also re-roll because I have some money. Uh, we don't need to re-roll right now, though. That's... Oh, crap. I think I killed it before it managed to deal, deal damage to me. So now we have the same uh, as we, the ones that we had in Tier 2. The ones that shot beams. Now it's ice shooting beams, I suppose. I have no idea what that's supposed to be, really. Some sort of fire beam thing, potentially? Not 100% sure. Uh, we are uh, saving up for our ultimate, so potentially we can get an ultimate. Oh, there's a big sword. Lovely. So even if you don't uh, plan on using these um, weapons, you can still sell them, which is obviously very, very good as well. Oh, we got, uh, we got the summoners of this level, which is some sort of 
robot thing, I suppose. Robots uh, that are flying, that have very big fists. And they are spawning these little horned dudes. So, yeah, it, the, 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 the unit type difference is not that great. Visually, yes, but functionally they are basically exactly the same. So it's not like we're... It's not like we're being introduced to new concepts here. Which again is some degree I can... I can understand that it can be difficult to do that if you are the only one working on a game, I suppose. Uh, but still, it's uh, one of those things that could potentially make the game better if you had slightly different kinds of enemies instead of just the same enemy but it looks a bit different and its projectile is a bit different. At least I think that that is uh, something to keep in mind. So alright then, let's uh, circle around. I have no idea how good or bad the wand is. Really. But it's fun to have different weapons. So I have a very varied appearance here. I'm just gonna pop a potion because why not? Wave 11 out of 16. We're swiftly getting to the boss wave. So now, if you would just like to kill these, thank you. So much stuff lying around. Let's wait for all of it to come to me. Drop rate up, sure. We also did get a level up there. Perfect. This seems to be the way out. It works indeed. Oh, another chest. Ooh, what the hell is that? <laughs> is that uh, is that one of the books? Prayer book? Or the priest? Well, I mean, everyone can have... Oh, crap. I just flat out ignored the projectile there. Yeah, I think that that might actually be a book. Yeah, it is a book. No idea how the books work. Haven't actually used one. Could be interesting. So, uh, keep on doing this. Keep on doing this. It also would be nice if, like, the main character would be at least a little bit... I, I, I'm not gonna say not necessarily customizable, but, again, if we compare it to Brotato, different kinds of... Um, uh, main characters, so to speak, they look slightly different. Could be something to think about in this game as well, because, well, we have different classes that we start with, so why couldn't they look a little bit different? Could be a thing, just saying. Uh, oh, bloody hell, there's a lot of stuff that I can pick up here. But I do need you guys to follow me a bit, that is to say the big robot-y looking dudes with the big punchy fists. Come on, come on, get to me. I wanna kill ya. Stop spawning the little guys. There we go. I also think that all of the enemies have exactly the same health, no matter what model it is, which is also a bit weird. Let's try to take out a number of the little guys, but it feels like the other aren't actually making their way to me. They are shielding the projectiles, so I can't actually see the projectiles, which is slightly annoying. Alright, you're gonna have to come to me now because I need to kill you. You are making my life a bit of a mess. There we go, thank you. Can I get to you as well? There we go. Come on, come on. There we go. Come on. Ow, oh, crap. <laughs> Just ignore that myself. Okay, there we go. I don't know if there are upgradable versions of the um, uh, health potions, by the way, because I am sitting on a lot of health now, so each uh, health potion isn't really doing much. <laughs> 50, uh, 50 health when you have 360 health is not much. There we go. And we're actually not done, because there's just more, more of this. <laughs> I need to get rid of the uh, robots now as quick as... Shoot, please. I, I have good range. Why, why, are, why are we... Well, actually, have I even increased my range? I don't think I have, like, via skill points. I don't think I did. <laughs> Maybe I ought to have done that. Maybe I ought to have done that. Well, it is what it is right now. If the ice wouldn't mind coming to me. Thank you. It was a bit faster than the previous wave, so that's good. There we go. Can I gather all this now, please? Yes, I can. Lovely. Ah, there we go. Nice bit of free, free health. Top up. I have access to the ultimate. But obviously we're waiting with the ultimate to the next level. Well, actually, you know what we can do? I can actually activate it right now. So there we go. That's the entirety of that one. And it actually just keeps on going. 
So, oh, there, there's Medusa, there's Medusa. Potion, potion, potion. Oh, she's actually quite fast. Go diagonally. They can't do diagonally. It's fine. Oh, what are you doing? That's interesting. Somehow I lost. What actually killed me? I'm not entirely sure, you know. All right, then. Well, we did get a, a bunch of stuff. We have more SP, etc., etc. But I think you get the point. This is Dungeon and Craft, and it's, uh, it's rough. Let's just say. It's rough. I don't think I can, at this point in time, actually recommend this game. But not because it's, uh, you, you know, done, rather, because it can't be a good game. But it's just a bit too rough around the edges right now. It needs to figure itself out to some degree. So, for example, the graphics. We have this building, which is uh, one style. And then you have this dungeon, which is a different style. It's, it's a bit of a mess and a bit all over the place. So if you could just do that, that's one thing. What I do like about the game, if we compare it to, let's say, Brotato, is this whole thing with uh, us being able to go around forge our own weapons etc it could possibly be made a little bit better you could get rid of the mini game that's completely pointless but other than that yeah i think that that's actually a pretty good idea and it works quite well as well so uh, there are basically redeeming factors in this game but it needs some uh, it, it needs some tlc to actually get to a place where i could recommend it but i'm not gonna say that it's uh, specifically bad but it needs to be better first. That's all I'm gonna say. By the way, can we try this, by the way? Yeah, press the key to go to the last boss. Is that the... Is this gonna be tier... Oh, bloody... What the hell? Oh, the last boss. Ah, I see. Not the, not the last boss that I did. The actual last boss of the game. Well, all right, then. I'm apparently just doing the last boss now, and it's bloody easy. Yeah, I mean, it has 48,000 hit points, and that you it's getting health, but again, you can just run, run around it. A little bit. Don't step into the fire. But yeah, you can just skirt around it. It's gonna take forever to kill this guy. So, alright, then, while I do, while I circulate the final boss, apparently we can do that. I don't have any health potions either, which is sad. Yeah. Dungeon and Craft, it's an interesting one, it could be better, but oh, you have health generation as well, okay, bloody hell, we're not gonna get this done, are we? We'll see if, if I get there. For now, though, this has been Ghostsmith Gaming with me, Christopher. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.